because we are kings and our words matter. How wonderful God is. He doesn't use any push and shove. He doesn't use any force or compulsion. The method that God uses in leading and guiding is the smoothest, softest, gentlest way of leading and guiding. Just teaching and just showing the eye, pointing the direction with the eye. You got to learn to read his eye. There'll be victory in the camp At the shower they'll shut down Every enemy will flee From the fire in his eyes Every captive will be free In this year of jubilee When we hear the shout of El Shaddai There'll be victory in the camp At the shout of El Shaddai Every enemy will flee From the fire in his eyes Every captive will be free In this year of Jubilee When we hear the shout Jesus himself said, he says here, I, am, I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. I am not saying to you that I am going to pray to the Father for you. You don't have to use that method anymore. You don't have to come to me and then I pray to the Father for you and then get you whatever you, no, no, that method is over. Now the new covenant has opened up new possibilities for you. You are at a better position right now. On that day, everything changed. On the resurrection day, everything has changed. From that day, I say unto you, I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. If Jesus himself says, don't call me and don't write to me. <laughs> then I think all the preachers should keep away from that. Unless you are better than Jesus. He says, I say not unto you 
that I will pray the Father for you. I'm not saying to you that I will pray to the Father for you. Why? Listen to the next verse. For the Father himself loveth you. Oh, I love this. For the Father himself loveth you. Everybody say, for the Father himself loveth you. In other words, he says, before your problem was you were in sin and you were not able to come to the Father because of your sin. But now, the Father himself loveth you. God, the Father himself loves you. So you don't have to come to me and I take your request to God and access God and access your answers for you. You go to the Father and ask in my name and ask and receive so that your joy will be full. Everything that you ask in my name will be given to you. Hello. So, he says, I'm not saying to you, come to me and I'll ask the Father for you. That period is over. I'm saying to you, the Father himself loves you. You go to the Father in my name. A lot of, for a lot of people, this is new truth. Because they only know how to call up the, some number they've got. Or some preacher. That's the level they are in. They only know how to write a postcard to some place where they'll pray for them. You know. They don't know how to go to the Father. I was preaching this. One preacher told me, Brother, if you preach like this, who will come to us? Look at how many people have come. Why have you come? Because I told you, you come, I will ask the Father for you. No. You came because I am teaching, saying, you don't have to come to me. You can go to the Father straight. You wouldn't know that if you didn't come here. You came here to get to know that. We are not getting you to come here so that you can come behind me and knock on my door and stand in line in my office to get prayed by me. We are getting you here to come and sit here in this comfort comfortable atmosphere so that you can listen to the privileges that you have in and through Jesus Christ. Where you stand, how you can come to the Father because the Father himself loves you. If Jesus was going to say, I say not unto you that I will ask the Father for you then nobody should say that. Everybody, every preacher should say, you go to the Father in the name of Jesus. You got a need? You go to the Father in the name of Jesus. He will answer you. Amen? All right. Let's go to the next one now. The third, third point, which we left hanging there, right? He leads and guides us. Let's start on it. <laughs> just have 10 minutes. So I'll just start on it today. But we'll continue next week. He leads and guides us. The Holy Spirit leads and guides us. That's a wonderful privilege that we have as sons and daughters of God. Because Romans 8, 14 says, They that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's one of the surest signs that you're a child of God when you're led by the Spirit of God. Now, a lot of people have a lot of misgivings about this. That's why I want to preach a little bit on that. A lot of people say, well, this personal guidance of the Holy Spirit is not available to everybody. They say it's available only to the gifted men of God. So they have these gifted men of God to whom these people go. I asked one fellow, why do you go? He says, because God speaks to him, brother. I said, doesn't he speak to you? He said, but he's got the gift, brother. I said, the gift giver is inside of you. The one who gave him the gift is inside of you. He thought about it. But he's tremendously gifted, brother. If I go to him, he'll tell me what's happening and all that. God will reveal something to him. And then he will tell me. Then I, everything I do, I ask him. And then only I do because he tell, tells me God's will in all the matters. I said, that's wrong. Because God leads everyone. If you're a child of God, then you are led by the Spirit of God. It doesn't say if you're a special apostle or a prophet or evangelist, pastor or teacher or some great man of God, then you're led by the Spirit of God. It says, they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. A lot of people have a hang up in this area, you know, that they can't believe that the Spirit of God will lead them personally. That's one thing that I'm going to clear up in my teaching in the next couple of weeks on this subject. 
But the thing is, let's talk about how does the Spirit of God lead. Now, I want to start it by talking about how the Spirit of God does not lead. Because once again, we have to deal with a lot of confusion, you see. One idea about Holy Spirit's guidance is this, that people think, well, brother, I think of Holy Spirit's guidance like this. One man said, I just stay put. If something happens, I take it as the will of God. If something doesn't happen, then I take it as that it's not the will of God. So whatever happens, it's the will of God. If it doesn't happen, that's the will of God also. That's the way I take it, he said. That's what is called armchair philosophy. You just sit there, you have nothing to do. You, you don't think, you don't analyze, you don't make a decision, you don't believe anything, you don't have to know God, you don't have to talk to God, you don't have to pray, you don't have to do nothing. Whatever happens, it's God's will. Whatever didn't happen, it's God's will. Now, I am so put off by this because it's, it just can't be biblically right because of this. Because it is an insult to man to treat him like this. God does not lead man and guide man like that. God made man in his image and likeness. We are made in God's image and likeness. That means we are able to think. We are able to feel. We, are, we have likes and dislikes. We can analyze, think, decide and determine and decree. We can have a relationship with God. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us. We are in fellowship with God. All these abilities and capacities are part of us. We have all this. Now, after having all this, would God say, just stay put. You can't even think right. You can't even decide right. You are incapable of getting to know my will in any way. So whatever I do, you take it as my will. Whatever I don't do, take it as my will also. Will he say that? That will be an insult. If somebody said to you, you stay put, I'll decide everything for you, you'll say, then what am I for? Right? You'll find it as an insult because you're a thinking person. You're an able person. You can decide and determine. You have likes and dislikes, you know. And if the person says, don't think, don't do anything, I'll take care of it, then you don't like it, you see. That's an insult to a human personality. And God made us in his image and likeness and he will not, in the matter of guidance, he will not treat us like that. Because we can know the will of God. We can be in fellowship with God. We can pray. God can speak to us. We can speak to God. We can know his word. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. We can decide and determine. We can think. All of these things are there. Therefore, I just can't believe that God would simply say, you just stay put. Whatever I do, that will be the will, my will. Whatever I didn't do, that no, that's not right. If God's will is going to be exercised by me, then I am going to play a very important part in it. I'm going to have to listen to God. I'm going to have to find out the will of God. I'm going to let God lead me. God speak to me. God show me the way. Then I'm going to think about it. I'm going to decide that this is the way I'm going to take because God is telling me this is the way I must take. So I'm going to think and decide and determine and walk in the way that he shows me. That's the only way God will lead me. Hello, are you there? To treat me like a thing, like a piece of iron or wood that can't even think, just stay put and I'll take it. That's, that's not God's approach. Secondly, the second misunderstanding about this is this, that a lot of people think that the Holy Spirit literally drives us, forces us, compels us and makes us to do his will. Now, this idea is very prevalent among people, Christian people. You know, when I was growing up, they used to preach like, you know, God will take you by your neck and lead you. I remember one guy preaching and saying, don't turn your neck this way or that way. You're going to break your neck, you know, because God has got you by the neck and uh, he's going to lead you by the neck. And he had a verse for that also, you know. This is how God leads you. And he says, you are a stiff-necked people. <laughs> so that's the way God leads you, you know. But I am a child of God. I'm not a stiff-necked person. <laughs> the idea that God drives people to do the will of God comes from that passage where it says, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, you know. In Luke 4, 1, it says that. But the same thing in Mark's gospel, in verse chapter 1, verse 12, where it 
where the same thing is said it is translated slightly differently the holy spirit driveth jesus into the wilderness it says so they took that and all these preachers that basically read the english bible took that that driveth you know so they formed a whole idea of how the holy spirit leads based on this that the holy spirit will drive you to whatever he wants you to do he will drive you and you it's like you are a little, little santro and a big 18 wheeler truck gets behind you and pushes you whichever way you know you can't go anywhere you know you are so <laughs> Uh, you know overpowered by this big vehicle behind you and he's going to push you and and shove you wherever he can you know that's the way they picture it you know and they've taught this so much driving forcefully dealing with people and so on but that once again is an insult to human personality that's not how the holy spirit will lead you think the holy spirit is going to push me and uh, and compel me and uh, make me do something uh, you know i don't think so because god has made me to be a thinking person a person who can decide and a person who can analyze things and come to a conclusion about things you know i don't think the holy spirit leads in that way forcefully the bible clearly says how the holy spirit leads let me just read to you a verse and leave you with that today and we will pick it up next week when we come you can think about this this is good turn with me to psalm 31 32 psalm 32 how does the holy spirit lead he is not going to lead you with an armchair philosophy where you just sit and he does everything whatever happens that's the will of god no that does not how he leads does he lead by force does he make you do something that he push you into it does he compel you force you into something no no Turn to Psalm 32. Let me read to you verse 8 and verse 9. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. Now, you got to read the Bible very clearly. I will instruct thee and teach you in the way that you should go. Instruct means, teach means to instruct and teach. What am I doing right now? Teaching. Tamil it says beautifully. Unai pothi ittu unai nadathu ven. that means i'll teach you and guide you how is god going to lead you and guide you he's going to teach you and guide you you're sitting here in church you're being taught god is trying to guide you he's showing you what is good what is bad which way to take what kind of decisions to make all these things that you receive by way of teaching is going to help make the right decisions in your life regarding everything in your life god says i will teach you and i will guide you amen He didn't say I will beat you and I'll guide you. He didn't say I'll tie a rope around your neck and I'll guide you and drag you into my will. He didn't say I'll take you by your neck and make you do my will. No. He said I will teach you. Look at the respect and the honor and the dignity that God gives to man. I said to you because God made you, he respects you more than anybody else. only those that don't uh, understand how god has made man they will teach something like god will take you by the neck and lead you and all of that god respects us so when he wants to guide us and lead us the method that he uses primarily is the teaching method he teaches and guides us i'll tell you my friend if you listen to the teaching of god's word you'll receive guidance in so many issues of your life the guidance is right there what to do what not to do the guidance is there now listen to this a little bit more in that verse i will guide thee with mine i i like the english version in tamil it didn't come out so beautifully so i had to tell the english and give the meaning i'll lead you with my mine i what is leading with an i have you seen in a home where the kids are making big ruckus you know and and the father is screaming and shouting and saying go sit over there go eat your idlis i'm going to you know whip you if you don't and he's he's a big tall man got all muscles and he's shouting and screaming and everything but the mother comes and just stands there and looks at the child like this and he quietly eats those two idlis and then she shows her eyes like this and he goes to the room he knows what that meant she doesn't have to say one word shows the eyes points in that direction with her eye 
and he gets to the room. Hello. No shouting, no screaming. The poor men are, you know, they're using too much energy sometimes. <laughs> the women, they have some magic. I don't know where they got it from. Because, man, it's one thing to just show the child where to go with your eye, but they can show their husbands too sometimes. <laughs> A child is nothing. Have you seen sometimes uh, the women showing the eye to the husband and the husband says, mm -hmm. <laughs> he don't, he don't have not, no reply to give. <laughs> That's I talking, my friend. That's I will lead you by my eye situation. <laughs> This is happening every day at home, but yet people don't understand. This is the softest, smoothest, gentlest way to lead. No pushing, no shoving, no catching by the neck, no punching, no pinching, nothing. No force, no compulsion, no power is used, nothing is used. Just teaching and showing the eye. You want him to go this way, show him this way with your eye. This way, you just show the eye this way, he goes this way. Hello. I was going to say all the men say amen. But <laughs> <laughs> now we all understand that. The women understand, men understand, everybody understand. So now you'll never forget that verse. I'll lead you by mine. I <laughs> you can write that and put it up in your house. I'll lead, <laughs> I'll lead you by my eye. How wonderful God is. He doesn't use any push and shove. He doesn't use any force or compulsion. The method that God uses in leading and guiding is the smoothest, softest, gentlest way of leading and guiding. Just teaching and just showing the eye, pointing the direction with the eye. You got to learn to read his eye. Just like you've learned to read your wife's eye. <laughs> and just the, like the kids understand that eye language. You need to learn to understand when God shows his eye. Because that's the way God leads. See what all we have made out of God's guidance. You know, we, Instead of telling this very plainly. We have said he'll take you by the neck and he'll make you do this. And you know if you turn this way or that way your neck will break and all that. No that doesn't happen because God respects us very much. He teaches us and just leads us with his eyes. Now look at this. Next verse. See why he doesn't take us by the neck? Why doesn't he put a rope around our neck and lead us? He wants to, he can do that because we are not a horse or a mule. And he says that in the next verse. Listen to this. Be not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Don't be like the horse or the mule which have no understanding. He tells people, he says, hey, I'm going to lead you by teaching and by my eye. Don't be like the horse or the mule that has no understanding. The horse or the mule needs a rope around the neck, needs a little goad to press and push and shove, you know, so that it'll do the job. You need, you, you need all kinds of stuff for a ox, I mean, for a, for a cow or a, a horse or a mule, you see. Be not as the horse or the mule which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with a bit and bridle, yet... Uh, lest they come near unto thee. Bridle. <laughs> okay. And lest they come near unto thee. See. He says, don't be like the horse or the mule. For them you got to put a bit in their mouth. You got to bridle their tongue. You got to get them in control. In that way. You got to do all that stuff physically, you know. There you got to catch the neck. You got to put a rope around you got to push and shove and do all this. Don't be like that because you are not like that. You are not a horse or a mule. You are a person made in the image and likeness of God. Teaching is good enough. Just showing the eye is good enough. That's the thing that God does. That's the way that God leads. We have raised a thousand voices Just to lift your holy name And we will raise thousands more Sing of your beauty in this place. 
Touch your heart, Lord. Touch your heart. 